Hello and welcome to Petapaw Vlog number three. To all of my followers out there that are actually growing, surprisingly, I thank you. I uh, thank you for all the feedback you've given me. And I'm going to keep going with this thing as people show interest and, and it's an outlet for me and hopefully it's something for you to take in. Uh, this week's story is a uh, teachable story is really going to be about uh, coaching. It's something I'm extremely passionate about. I'm going to share with you a little life story that made me click that that was this week's vlog. As you know, I try and do a personal tie-in and a work tie-in to each story each week. Um, but coaching professionally has always been something for me, but there was a, per a personal side that drove it uh, this week. Um, Sunday afternoon, I'm sitting with my son, who's uh, five and a half, and we're watching his favorite movie and now my favorite movie. Actually, anyone who knows me knows it's been my movie, favorite movie for a long time when it comes to animated movies, and that's The Lion King. Uh, there's a famous scene in the movie when Simba and Mufasa are sitting in a field, so the son and the dad lion, and uh, the son looks up at the stars and uh, he's saying, you know, dad, you're always going to be around, right? And uh, Mufasa gets into a pretty emotional speech where he says, you know, like past kings, I too will be in the stars there to guide you and support you one day and you can always talk to me. Um, my son asked me after watching that scene, dad, when you're over 100 and, and you die, will you be in the, stu will you be in the sky to, to help me? Um, and wow, you talk about an emotional moment, uh, as I'm sure any father or, or mother would go through with their child when they ask that question. It's pretty difficult, um, but it clicked. Um, I've got an opportunity to give my son some life lessons through the course of his life. Some of them will be planned, some of them will be reactive, some of them will be proactive. Um, but I want him to remember me when I'm gone, and not just from being his dad, but the guidance I've provided him so he can keep those life lessons going forward. Um, very, very important to me, and, and, and pretty emotional moment when a, when a six-year-old starts to talk to you about what they're going to do when you're gone. Um, but kids are curious, that's how they learn, they ask questions, and you got to be there to answer them. So um, I thought, wow, what a, what a great opportunity to tie that to a professional challenge I've always had, which is coaching people. So they take something with them, whether they stay with your organization or they go elsewhere. And you may not always be around to see the finished product, but if you've done your job as a leader, you've helped them succeed, I believe that's going to be the same thing with my son. You know, one day, believe it or not, I will be gone, and he'll carry on and lead his own life and start his own family. And, um, you know, hopefully he'll, lead, he'll have some lessons that he's learned from me that he can take with him to make him a better person, just like I have with my father. Um, from a professional perspective, uh, that's a real big reason of why I've always been such a fan of dedicated, formal coaching. And I don't just mean that where you sit down and you review some numbers and hold someone accountable. I really mean where you're observing their behaviors and they're giving them feedback for two reasons. One is, so they're not caught like a deer in the headlights when you have to take corrective action. They're not surprised. And conversely, when they're doing well, they know which behaviors to repeat. Um, it's something that anyone who knows me really upsets me when I see senior leadership um, in organizations spend no time in developing their employees or don't think it's important. I don't know how you want to get behaviors to be repeated or behaviors to be changed when all you do is measure numbers or even worse in some organizations not give them any feedback at all till review time or heaven forbid the day you let them go. Um, nowhere close to fair. Nowhere close to fair for the individual being coached or the coach. So I'm a big believer of coaching formally um, but also doing it observation-based, based on the behaviors that are happening, giving them live feedback on a regular basis, um, and giving it to them when it happens, when you see it. Can you imagine an NHL coach who does drills all week, and then when the game comes, crosses his arms and doesn't say anything to the team in between the periods or during the game? It just doesn't happen that way. You have to coach it when you see it, but you have to have a formal structure to go back and recognize the behaviors and take corrective action where necessary, or provide recognition where necessary. Um, it's as I try and condense these vlogs down to be shorter, the key message I'm giving is basically that if you've done your job as a leader, that individual will repeat the behaviors you need to, to see them succeed and your organization succeed, um, and they'll get enthused by it and they'll repeat and take it to new levels. If they're struggling and you're consistent with the feedback and you're observing it and you sit on a, de on a dedicated basis and give them that feedback with the desire to help them grow and they can't, they don't have the skill set, they're not a deer in the headlights when the time comes to make a decision to part ways or to put them on corrective action, whatever that may be. The individual usually makes the decision with you because they've been a part of the process every way. Big pet peeve of mine. Um, I've worked for some organizations that don't believe in it. 
um, and I can't understand how people wouldn't dedicate time into their number one resource, which is their people. I've been a big believer of it since I was influenced it early on in my career. And as I said in blog number one, you learn from good leaders, you learn from bad leaders. And I've taken that skill with me wherever I go because I've seen bad leaders absolutely not want to do anything formal when it comes to coaching. And I've seen great leaders who know how critical it is. Now, as I go back to that story about my son and, and Mufasa and Simba, um, the life learning lessons and the observations clearly started when he was born and will continue through his life and, and my life. Um, but what I want to do is every time I see something happen, I want to give him some feedback and be communicative. Listen, I'm not going to sit down my five-year-old and give him a formal written coaching session, obviously. But I don't want to let the opportunities to set him up for the future slide by. In this difficult situation about how long I'd be around and, and what support I could give him when I was gone, um, I couldn't shy away from it and had to give him some feedback. So what I told him was, you know, I'm going to be here with you for a long time. You know, my son seems to think that I'm going to live to be 100, and if I do, great. Um, but I'm going to be here for a long time, and we're going to learn a lot about life together, and I'm going to share some experiences to make it easier for you. Um, but your dad's always going to be there, and if you listen closely to your father, even when he's not around, he'll still be talking to you and giving you messages. And it, and it seemed to work for him at this age. Um, pretty, uh, pretty touching moment when you watch that movie met now, maybe, and, and you think about this. Um, the relationship between a father and his son, a uh, pretty cool moment for me and, and, and a great um, coaching and communication moment with my son, believe it or not. It's not structured, obviously, when it, when it comes to family, but it's there. The core behaviors are the same. Don't run away from the problem, address it, give candid feedback, and be consistent. It's the same thing you've got to do in your professional life. If you as a leader are not coaching your team, you're failing them. You're failing your organization, and quite frankly, you're failing yourself. That may seem extremely critical, and everyone's got their own styles, but you've got to be coaching. And I've seen too many senior executives um, in past organizations be really passionate about it, and they've been phenomenal, had great workforces, and therefore great results because the measurement comes from, and too many organizations where they frankly just don't dedicate any time to it. You know, we've all seen, in, and a lot of us have seen in the business world, the equation that says, you know, quality plus service over price equals value. Um, I'd argue there is a different formula for coaching, and that is observations, okay? So, oh, feedback, okay? Over measurement, because it's got to be tied to goals and targets, equals coaching value. So, the ability to observe it happening, the ability to have the mechanism to give them the feedback, the ability to put that over some measured results because it's important and every business has measured results to hit their strategic plan and move forward. And it's important that you're truthful with your team and engage them in that and tell them how they can play a role and bring value. That full equation comes up to your ability as a leader to give coaching value back to your team and let them help you get the organization to grow. So if you get anything out of this video, hopefully you've learned that coaching is critical and also that you learn that The Lion King is one heck of a movie. Till vlog number four.